Okay, so this is the spinning dancer animation, which looks like this when you loop it. And so that is a two-dimensional animation that your brain can your brain when you when your brain views this it constructs a three-dimensional image in in your mind and your brain can either see that as spinning counterclockwise or spinning clockwise cuz in reality it's just two dimensions it's a flat it's just a flat object moving and your brain can construct it as a three-dimensional object that's either spinning counterclockwise or spinning clockwise and if you look at that most people will see it spinning one way or the other way and it might be kind of hard to to get your brain to see it spinning the other way but the truth is you could see it spinning either way or even you could see it spinning just back and forth so in a sense it's actually spinning both ways and so um, when I was saw the Vishar video about the Merkaba, it struck me that it was a similar kind of thing. And so, here is a Merkaba illustration that I did, and simple line drawing. And so, what is a Merkaba? A Merkaba is uh, two interpenetrating tetrahedrons. So notice the upward facing tetrahedron and the downward facing tetrahedron. I shaded one to make it look different to stand out from the other one. And so you can see that they're interpenetrating and you can sort of construct the three-dimensional visualization in your mind. So this would be like the base of one of them facing upward and you could see the downward facing one. And kind of like the spinning dancer in that you're, it's a two-dimensional object that your brain can visualize as three-dimensional and it's kind of like the spinning dancer in that there's different ways you can visualize it. You can visualize it that it's that the upward facing one is pointing towards you or pointing away from you and the downward facing one is pointing away from you or pointing towards you. It's a uh, confusing to try to explain but there's different ways that this can pop out at you. It's kind of ambiguous a little bit, but anyway, I had the aha idea of putting the two together, and so I constructed this crude little thing here, which is made out of paper and plastic, and I put it such that the spinning dancer shows through. And so now, if I play the animation, you see the spinning dancer within the Merkaba. And so I'll just let that loop indefinitely. So what do we have here? Well, my, yeah, there's so much that this could be that I'm just trying to play around with ideas here. But what I'm thinking when I had the idea to do this is that the idea is that the Merkaba spins right and spins left and it's supposed to like represent some interdimensional sort of dimension. And and um so since the spinning dancer is a two-dimensional thing that your brain interprets as three-dimensional that either can spin left or spin right depending on what your brain tends to gravitate towards but it can spin either way I was thinking that if you put that in there your brain gives you're giving your brain a chance to see something spinning either left or right in relation to the Merkaba so in relation to the dancer the Merkaba is actually spinning and, and it could either be spinning left or right, depending on how you see the dancer spinning. And I think that's kind of interesting to play around with. Now, I've played around with a number of ideas with this. Like, for example, just kind of forget about the spinning dancer and just focus on the Merkava and just sort of try to visualize is 
because the Merkava is kind of a hard thing to actually visualize in clarity in your mind's eye because it's a complex shape. But if you can look at that Merkava, that simple line drawing, and visualize it in three-dimensional form, get it to pop out at you, get it to pop, and then just sort of let the spinning dancer go whichever way it wants to. But try to hold the Merkava as a three-dimensional visualization. And that's why I shaded one one color and shaded the other one other color, so you can sort of like differentiate between the two interpenetrating tetrahedrons. So, um, another thing I've played with is just focus on one tetrahedron. Try to just focus on the shaded tetrahedron, you know, and see if that makes that which way does the dancer spin when you just focus on the shaded tetrahedron. Or, alternatively, you could just focus on the non-shaded tetrahedron and just visualize that in three-dimensional form and see if that tends to make the dancer spin in a different direction. Does that trick your brain to see it differently? Well, it's not really tricking, but you know what I mean. Um, or, just play around with visualizing various aspects of the Merkaba as a three-dimensional figure and just see if it changes the way you perceive the dancer to be spinning. Um, now, before I started looking at this, it was kind of hard for me to get the dancer to change directions. My brain would just see it one way, and maybe I'd look at it for a little bit, and then it would kind of click and go the other way. And I could sort of get, I could sort of like look at it at a different angle and get it to spin a different way, but it was kind of hard. But after I looking at it this way, I tend to see the dancer just spinning back and forth. It just spins one way, and then spins the other way, and spins the other way, and spins the other way. It just kind of turns back and forth in spot. And before, that was really hard for me to see, but as soon as I put this over at the top of it, boom, I could see it really easy, which I think is kind of interesting. And even even after taking the Merkabas little thing away from the animation, I tend to still be able to see it spinning just back and forth. So it's kind of interesting that maybe just getting my brain to perceive it spinning back and forth was enough, and then now I can see it spinning back and forth. 